We're given a table on the age structure of usual residents of 18 local authorities in the northwest of the UK. So this is from the large data set. Good news is that you can answer this question without having ever studied it. Obviously, you've got an advantage if you have looked at it in the past. So we're asked to only look at columns 0 to 17 and 18 to 25 and decide whether a local authority might include a university to start with. So university towns are going to have a lot of younger students and therefore that's going to be the answer really. Relatively high proportion or percentage in this case of 18 to 24 year olds. So not zero to 17, you know, that's before university. So that is very important that you say that. Okay, and then what is it about these two columns that might um, show whether a local authority attracts young couples to live? Well, that's gonna be a relatively high proportion of both. Because they might start a family and have like a young child or they might be say 23, 24 as a couple themselves. And then finally, for this part A, a local authority that attracts retired people to live. So that's gonna be when there's actually a higher percentage in the right-hand column. But remember, the question is asking us about the first two columns. So it's gonna be a lower proportion of both. So we're asked to use, use our answers here to identify four local authorities that might include a university. So trying to focus on high proportions, as we said, for 18 to 24. So 14%, that's above yeah, the sort of typical ones, and these two here as well. So they're the ones that jump out. I think M as well, because we're asked for, how many we asked for? Four. So that one's, yeah, that one's going to be in fourth place. So G, H, K, and M. Three local authorities that might be attractive to retired people. So that's when we're looking for a relatively low proportion. Can't help but like look at the higher ones here maybe as a, as a starting point. Okay, we've got a very low percentage of 18 to 24 year olds here. And um, like so the 7.7% 7 .7, 7 is quite small, but then the 20 is a bit higher. So let's just keep looking. Uh, so N jumps out, that's 6%, and 0 to 17 is also quite low. Um, and then we've got 7.33%. Actually, I should be highlighting both because it's, it's both that we're looking for here. So these are. These are some of the lowest in both the 0 to 17 and 18 to 24. So F, N, and R. For C, we're asked to explain why our answer to part B2, that is deciding which three local authorities might be attracted to retired people. Um, based on these columns, 0 to 17, 18 to 24, why might it not be reliable? Well, I went for the answer, maybe older people would like to go live near their younger relatives. So there's there's a bit more to it than just looking at the percentages. I'm going to just show you the, the mark scheme now. So basically, just because, yeah, this is a good one. Just because you get low proportions, that doesn't mean that it's not attractive to older people. Um, there could be a lot of 25 to 64 year olds as well. So if you might have a high a low proportion of um, seven, 0 to 17 and 18 to 24, but a high proportion of 25 to 64, and then a, a low proportion of 65 plus. Um, you know, just, just some sort of reason like this, maybe reasons for low percentage of younger people, such as no schools. So basically, there's there's a lot that could be going on, and we, we shouldn't be just be making conclusions based on these two columns. 
All right, we've still got two bits to do. do. So the um, told lower quartile, median, and upper quartile for 65 and over are given as this. And we have to use the information to comment on our answers to be part two and part C. Now, I actually made a mess of this. I started talking about the sp spread of the data being small, but it's all it's all relative, actually. So that, that was wrong. In fact, what we're meant to do is investigate outliers. So IQR, the interquartile range, is going to be the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, sometimes called Q3 and, and Q1, respectively. And so that is going to be 16.76 minus 14.56, which is 2.2. And then outlier definition, outlier boundary or boundaries, given by lower quartile minus 1.5 times interquartile range. So we could go like far enough, we just have to set that boundary somewhere. And then the upper quartile plus 1.5 times interquartile range. Sorry, I just want to write the general idea down. So where does 1.5 come from? It just comes from the fact that one seems a bit small and two seems a bit big. So we go with 1.5, but it's just a human construction to set that as the, the boundary for an outlier. So in our case, it's going to be 14.56 minus 1.5 times 2.2, which is 12.69. That's the lower boundary for cutoff. And then 16.76 plus 1.5 times 2.2 which is 19.29, that's the upper boundary. So let's just look at the question again. I'm just going to delete that so we can see B part two as well. We're trying to use this information, this, these boundaries, to comment on our answers to B part two and part C. So. B part two, we identified F, N and R as potential local authorities that might attract retired people. We then sort of counteracted that in C and said that it might not be the case. But let's have a look then and see if they are outliers. And actually, I only needed really to look at the upper boundary. Okay, It didn't hurt to find the lower boundary as well, but it's all about the upper boundary being 19.29. So F, N and R. Now remember, this is about the 65 and old over column. So F, N, and R. They have um, percentages that are above our cutoff. So they are outliers. And therefore, actually, um, B part two is confirmed. The fact that we have a higher um, proportion of retired people in these, in these local authorities, despite our comments in part C saying that we shouldn't base it on the zero to 17 and 18 to 25 information. So I just want to kind of go through that once more. Um, we said, and we, so we identified, we used the two columns to say FN and R could well be these places with retired people because there's a low percentage of zero to 17 and 18 to 24. In part C, we started arguing against that saying, well, just because they are low proportions doesn't mean you have high proportions for 65 plus. It might be that the 25 to 65 is bigger, but it turns out when we look at the um, the cutoff for outliers, F, N, and R actually are outside. So we do have, you know, they are, well, you can clearly see there are a lot of um, retired people 65 and over. I know, you know, not everyone will retire at 65 necessarily, but it still gives you the right, same right idea. Um, so even though we made these comments and see, We've confirming B part two that there is a high proportion of retired people 
in F, N, and R. All right, finally, part E. The mean of the percentages, age 65 and over, is 16.9. Remember, the median was 15.99. We have to use this information and the information given in D to explain whether the median or the mean better represents the data in 65 and over columns. So let's just write it down again. The median, now we don't actually base it on what the numbers are. I'll get to that in a second. Okay, so basically there are outliers in the 65 plus column. We've already said what they are, they're F, N, and R. And these will drag the mean up. These will, um, yeah, bring the mean up. It's a little bit like the classic case where you have some employees at a company. Uh, maybe you've got lots of people just, you know, working in on the, I don't know, just like a low wage, let's say. And then you might have a CEO earning a lot of money. So if you put their salaries together and work out the mean, then the CEO's salary is going to make it look like everyone's earning more because the CEO might be earning, you know, 10 times as much. So if you say to somebody, yeah, the average salary at this company is such and such, then it's a bit misleading. Whereas if you look at the median salary, if you have, you know, most of the people won't be the CEO, will they? There'll be a lot of people working on lower wage, and that would be a more representative number. So that's what this is talking about here. These will bring the mean up um, and and basically distort, distort it, whilst the median is not affected by outliers. It doesn't matter if your highest earner is on, you know, the same as everyone else or like, you know, a hundred times more. We're still looking at the middle number. So it will be the better choice here. It's interesting that people, when people refer to the average, they're typically referring to the, the mean, but it's, you know, and then they think that is the best one to use, but actually it's not. And this is a nice little, you know, last part of the question, which, which tests that, tests your understanding of that. Okay, large data set question. I never always, I never really enjoy doing these, but look, you can see why the importance of it. Um, because we're dealing with real life data here and trying to make conclusions and that, you know, stats is a lot of stats is about doing that. So thanks.